everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day, and welcome back to not so much GTA 5, but a video that's related to GTA 5, because today I want to show you how to install add-on car mods into GTA 5, and this is actually, in the same way this is showing you add-on mods, this is going to be an add-on video, there are going to be two videos today, and this is probably going to be the first one, so check in, check in the next couple of hours or so, and there should be another video up, because maybe not all of you are going to be interested in this video. This is more for all the comments that I get all the time asking me how to install add-on car mods into GTA 5. Apparently a lot of you read the readmes and you still don't understand it. Perhaps you're just better visual learners than you are trying to read through instructions. So hopefully once you have finished this video you should now understand how to install add-on car mods into GTA 5. So what do we need? First of all we need a copy of GTA 5, a legit copy of GTA 5. Now in this case I am not using the Steam version of GTA 5. I have the standard version that you have to download through the Rockstar website or what you would have if you bought the game on CD like I did or DVD rather. So uh, I don't know how this is going to work for Steam users but I assume it's going to be exactly the same. When I try to point myself to the GTA 5 folder you'd have to find the one that is in the Steam folder. Um, so I can't really help you with that, but hopefully everything else should be pretty much the same. So with our legit copy of GTA 5, we also need to get OpenIV. There will be a link in the description below on how to get this. So we're going to download that. And that's going to download that, and it's going to ask us if we want to keep or discard this one, because it's an EXE file. I'm using Chrome in this case, so I'm going to click Keep. And also we're going to install this. This is going to be our example mod the McLaren 570S. There will be a link to this mod in the description below as well. So we're going to click download and we're going to download that one too. So let's install OpenIV. This is going to be as quick as possible just to show you how to install this. So we're going to click run, select our language. We're definitely not Russian. Accept the terms. No one ever reads these things. Continue. I'm going to install this in the space that it tells me to. I'm not going to change anything. It doesn't really bother me where things are installed, but if you so wish to tell it to in to be installed somewhere else, you can put that in right here. And we're also going to create a desktop icon as well. And also let's set it to run after installation as we're going to be using it soon anyway. We're going to click continue. It's going to ask us to download something. We're just going to click, click, click yes and it's going to install everything into that folder. And hey presto, it is now completed successfully. So we can close that and it should open up OpenIV for us. So what we're going to do is because we're modifying GTA 5 on Windows, we're going to click GTA 5 and Windows right there and we're going to tell it where we've installed it. So in this case, I've installed it on a separate drive in a games folder, Rockstar Games. GTA uh, 5, it, you probably find it in perhaps program files, Rockstar Games, GTA 5, somewhere like that if you've installed it in the standard place. And once we've clicked that, clicked that folder in, so we go Rockstar Games, GTA 5, once that folder is there, you can see X64 update, that sort of stuff, ignore menu stuff, that's just some extra mods I've got installed. Once you can see that, click select folder, it will detect that you have a GTA 5, click continue, it can tell you at this point to back something up, in this case I'm, um, I'm not really going to do that, but you can feel free to back up your game as, as well. You can just copy the entire GTA 5 folder and paste it somewhere else so you've got a backup. But in this case, I'm not going to do that for this video. So we click continue and then we click continue again and it's going to search the encryption key and then eventually it will load up OpenIV ready for us to use. So here we are in OpenIV. Don't get sort of scared at the fact there's loads of things going on. You don't really need to use most of it. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to go to tools. We're going to go to ASI manager and we're going to make sure that everything is installed. Now, actually, because I've already had this running, I'm going to uninstall everything first so I can show you installing them. It should come like this. So I'm going to click install. Then I'm going to install this, and it's going to tell us to create a mods folder. So we're going to click yes. And we're also going to install open camera as well. That's what makes it so when you go to the Rockstar editor, it means that you can move the camera as far back as you want to without any limits. It's really useful. So I'd install that too. So this mod folder that we just made is going to be the basis of installing all mods in GTA 5. And the reason for this is if you then want to play online, all you'd have to do is go back to OpenIV, go to your ASI manager and just uninstall everything. And then you should be able to go online. But do be careful because it does say here, do not play GTA online with a modified RPF as you will be banned. Uh, so you do have to have some precaution. I am not responsible for anyone getting banned. Same as the people who make OpenIV. It is at your risk that you do this. If perhaps it'd be easier for you to just make two separate install folders and do it that way, but this is how we're going to do it. This is the nice simple way. 
this is how it's going to work. So now that we have this new mods folder, what we want to do is we want to check out our mod that we just installed here. So I'm going to open this up in WinRAR. It's going to tell me that I've got an expired thing. Oh, this is the same as everyone. And inside this, in the add-on section for this mod in particular, there is a readme. Readmes are always useful. And this readme is going to tell us what files we're going to be changing. So as you can see here, we've got update RPF, uh, update RPF, update. Everything here that we're changing is in the update folder. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the GTA 5 folder. I'm going to find the update folder right here. And I'm going to copy the entire folder to our new mods folder. It's a pretty big thing. You can see it's 10 gigabytes. We're just going to leave that to copy. And this is what we're then going to be modifying. So we're not modifying the base game. We're actually taking the folders and then modifying them. So perhaps if you're sick of the mods, all you'd have to do is just uninstall the mods folder. Or just turn off the ASI things as I showed you previously. So here we are. Everything's done. And we should have an update folder with x64 folder and the update RPF. I've also copied x64e and x64i. You can find these things in the base GTA 5 folder down here. Now these aren't going to be used for this mod but I do have other mods installed and quite a lot of mods use x64e and x64i which is things to change uh, cars with modifications, wheels, all that sort of thing. So um, obviously depending on what mod you've got depends on what you want to stick in your mods folder. But we're going to ignore these two today because we're just going to be focusing on this. So we can close this explorer folder. I'm going to close GTA 5, uh, the open IV program as well. And I'm going to open it up again, select Windows. And now when we go to our mods folder, we should have everything there ready to edit. Perfect. Okay. So we're just actually just going to read through the readme as well. So I'm just going to do exactly the same as what you would do if you are reading through the readme. So we're going to firstly go to update. We're going to go to update RPF. Uh, it's going to tell us some things because this is the first time we've installed this. It's going to give us some little helpful tips. I'm just going to click do not show this message again. Then we're going to go to common and data as you can see that it says right here. Now inside this folder we need to look for the DLC list which is right here. But if something's deep in the folder and you don't know how to find it, just select anywhere inside this window and just press the letters on your keyboard and it will then show up. So I'm going to click DLC and as you can see it's now showing and highlighting the DLC uh, list.xml file. What we're going to do is going to click edit mode, click yes, and we want to copy this into a folder. So what I'm going to do is I've got this separate mods folder here. I'm just going to copy that over, or we're going to click and drag rather. So this is click and drag. And now we have this file that we can edit. So I'm going to open this up in Notepad. If you don't have yours opening up in Notepad, you're going to right click, open with, and notepad or you might have to go to choose default program and then find notepad in the list. I just I've got mine here. So I'm just going to keep using notepad. Here we go. And now we have this list of XML. This looks kind of complicated or anything. Don't worry. It's pretty simple. We're going to get this line that is given us right here. We're going to copy it over and we're going to stick it right at the end. I'm just going to click at the start and hit the tab key a couple of times. So it's all lined up, but I don't think you really need to do that. And then all we have to do is click save control S or file and save and that is now done all we have to then do now is just click on that and drag it back over into that and you can see that it changed from compressed and encrypted to just compressed that has been edited and done so now is step two step two it says add line below so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the folder update rpf common data again so actually the same uh, folder that we got the dlc list xml which is pretty simple and we're going to find the extra title update data dot meta, which is two down. That's pretty simple. So again, I'm going to click and drag and copy this over to our mods folder. It doesn't have, you don't have to make a separate mods folder. This is just an easy folder. You can stick it in documents, whatever, whatever is easiest. Just take it out of open IV and into here. We're going to open this up in notepad again, as it's a dot meta file, you might have to then go for the right click open with and then go to notepad as well. So we now have all of these and again all we're going to do is copy this line that is given us these four lines here, scroll right to the bottom after the uh, forward slash item bit there. We're just going to make a space and paste that in. I'm just going to click at the start tab a couple of times just so it's all lined up and simple. Making sure that we don't sort of, we don't, what we don't want to do is perhaps do it in between that path line here and that item here. If you were to do that, that would not work because you've got these two here. It's not going to work right. 
We want to make sure that these are all separate from each other. Once that's done, Control S or File and Save. Close that down and then we're just going to copy that folder or that file rather back over here. As you can see, it changed from compressed encrypted to compressed. That's how we can see that it has been replaced. This is all pretty simple. This is the main bulk of what makes the add-ons work. It's basically tricking the game into thinking that the add-ons are actually a new DLC. That is pretty much it. So now we've got step three. It wants us to create a new folder this time. So we need to go to the folder, which is update x64 and DLC packs. We're going to go to the mods folder, update x64, DLC packs. And now this is where all the DLC data is coming from. So now we're going to click edit mode. Make sure that is make sure that we have it in edit mode. It may already be in edit mode. As long as we can see this little button right here to create a new folder. And we're going to call the new folder DYCE mods like it, like it tells us to do here. No quotes it says. And also we're going to make sure to not have any sort of capital letters or anything like that. I'm not sure if it's case sensitive. But just to be on the safe side. We're going to do that and click OK. We're going to go inside that folder. And it wants us to copy. Uh, it tells us to copy the folder. But we're not going to complicate things. We're going to just going to do it this way. Inside of our raw folder, we should have this DYCE mods thing. We just want to copy this DLC to RPF over, click and drag from WinRAR. You could do that, pretty simple. And it's now there and in. Perfect. And that is pretty much everything. That's all we have to do. So all the main data is what we've just added in this DLC RPF. All we've done is just added this new DLC that we've added to the list of DLCs for the game. And the game should now detect it. So now... We should be able to close that. We're just going to close these, get rid of these. And we're going to open up GTA 5. And hopefully, it's all going to work. Okay, so here we are now in GTA 5. And this is the fun bit. What you have to do is have a trainer installed. I'm sure you all have a trainer installed by now. In this case, I'm using the enhanced native trainer. We're going to go to vehicles. Vehicle spawner. And enter name manually. Shh. Shh. Dude. Shush. And I'm going to type in title. In this case, it's going to be 570S. There will be a title somewhere, whatever mod you install, whatever add-on mod, it will probably tell you the exact name of the car to spawn in. In this case, it's told us in the readme it is 570S. We're going to click enter. And it's sort of landed a bit skew if. But here we are. This is the car that we've just installed. It has not replaced any car. It is its own car in its own right from an add-on so it is now like having a dlc mod with the mclaren 570s this is a beautiful car if i if i had the money i would so buy one of these these are pretty much like mclaren's answer to porsches uh, just a normal porsche 911 i guess i guess that's what its rival is it's a beautiful beautiful car and there we are there is an add-on car mod put into gta 5 i hope that this hasn't been too long and confusing. I've tried to simplify this as much as I can. Um, hopefully you guys will all understand. If you do have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, just leave comments and questions anyway. If you've got all the way to the end of this video, as I do with all of my videos, uh, today's secret word is traffic lights. If you say traffic light in the comments, that's how I know you've watched to the end. But to be honest, this video is only going to be for those of you who genuinely need to install an add-on mod. I'm pretty sure if you've watched to the end here and you already knew how to install an add-on mod, why, why are you here? What, I, I don't know, maybe you just like listening to my voice or something. Do people, do people think that? I don't know. I don't want to listen to my voice. Editing my videos back is just a massive pain having to hear my voice. Ugh. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's been uh, educational and useful to you. So there we go, guys. Thank you all very much for watching, and keep checking out in the next couple of hours if you're watching this as it's just gone up live, as there will be a second video out today. There we go, guys. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. Bye.